Hey yo, what's up? You know what it is? The one and the only and the triple the G O D live on Team G R F T V. I'd like to welcome you guys back to another install in the Triple the God Speaks on. And yo, Lupin Ranger versus Panther Ranger, episode number five. Global Police in the Crosshair. More of what it is that I'm looking for from this show early on is that. I have been waiting for this clash that's happened in this episode for five episodes now. Because we got a little hint of it early on. And I'm just glad that this is an episode you use to build a whole lot of building blocks for what it is that the show is trying to establish and trying to do and trying to get done because of what this episode represents. And you might be listening to this and be like, yo, Trip, really? I'm like, indeed, really? I, I, I'm going somewhere with this. Let me do that. Because before I sat down and got on the mic about this, I kind of figured, like, I don't know if reviewing the episode is what I want to do versus discussing what it is that this episode is building and what it's building towards. Because... The episode is mostly standard fare, but what makes the episode work and what makes me excited about talking about it are the working parts that make it all work. I'm going somewhere with this. Again, I'm going somewhere with this. Let's just see if I can get there. All right. I think I got to start. I think I got to start. Okay. Let's run it like this is the our episode starts with a big giant question once the question is introduced why do black commander man have a briefcase with changes for both teams see this is where your intrigue starts because this is what the monster of the day is targeting. In this, we have something very important. We have the first major move by my nephew Destra. Because I've been waiting for this fool to step to step out the game and really do something other than say, hey boss, what you want me to wreck? And in this, he like, yo, hey yo, fam, I need you to handle this business for me. Do it. In this, and I'm just gonna cause I'm gonna jump around because. I think that this is where I want to land. I just want to land here. Because after all the stuff happened, and we're going to come back to that, since I'm on Destra, is that Goche has a lot to say about what Destra has done. You're going behind the boss's back and doing blah, 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 and such and such and such. Yeah, and so. Yeah, and so. I could go through their whole back and forth because... A lot of their back and forth goes through the whole episode of asking questions, of trying to sit up here and establish something that the villains may possibly know something that no one else does, but at the same time, is not really sure of how because we just stole a thing. But again, at some point, some villain is going to be introduced that is going to know more than they should and is going to fill in those blank spots that even both Destra and Gocha have about... That, yeah, we got this stuff in the Lupin collection, but the stuff they got different. And I'm not sure how it worked, but it's a thing. So let's just say it's a thing. You you do whatever you're going to do. The grind yo don't care because I'm putting in this work. And as long as I'm putting in the work for the fam, it shouldn't matter what I do, who I talk to, and all that. So in that, in that right there alone, in that little weird pecking order trying to establish something, Go to and stab your mom in the back for Dograno. That that we already understood and knew that, but that exchange seals it. Destra has a mind of his own. But we'll be talking a little bit more about Destra later. But it's good to know that he just he just ain't muscle. He got it, he got his own achievements, his own goals. I don't know if he gonna go so far as to cross the boss. But it's good to know he got his own gumption and willing to make his own moves and do what he got to do to forward his own agenda. So, let's take this Gojay and this Destra thing and let's put it in a box. 
because we're done with it. I want to get that out the way early because we finna go back early in the episode. We finna go back to the beginning. The Lupin Rangers sitting up here scoping out the moth of the day. Destry gets the word. Moth of the day moves out. Black Commander Man has a briefcase with changes in it. We don't know that yet, but just for the sake of the story, that's what's going on. Moth of the day attacks. Sits up her, takes the thing. Loop and range is set up her. Loop on red, loop on blue, loop on yellow. Set up her, put in work. Still one of the changes. And then they set up her and like, yeah. Meet us there. The pattern ranges, they show up at some point, but that's not really as important as what we're trying to establish. Because a lot of the rest of this episode is focused on the question of how and where did you get this stuff? The show's gonna give you zero answer. The characters in the show just like, hmm, we're not really 101% sure, but hey, what the hell, let's go with it. And that's about most of your episode is of why is this happening? We have no answers. We'll question it, but we'll stick it in the back of our head for a little while because at some point the answer's got to come, but it's not going to come right now. So why should we concentrate on it? In this is where things get interesting because in that blah, blah, blah moment that I tried to establish near the end of the opening fight of the episode, Kyrie sits up here and gives the monster this card and like, yo, yo, in a couple days, meet us here at the cut. We'll sit up here and we'll and we'll do a little swappy swap. Like we got what you want, you got what we need, and we're gonna swap it. So the day of the drop come, the pad rangers sit up here, they show up because there's a tracking device in the briefcase. And then the pattern rangers get hemmed up. The looping rangers show up at some point and like, yo, they walked into the trap floor. So fuck it, let's move out and let's do this. So in this. We got a whole bunch of dynamics going because everybody got a move in play. The fights happen for a while and things like that. And here is where we have our break. Because the Reds are about to clash. Because the fight happens is Kichiro has what is supposed to be that was what is supposed to be the dial fighters for the looping ranges and Kyrie has a bike that's supposed to be the, for the pattern ranges after they sit up her beat up the monster that they can take these things and they call the squads go handle the business split up do that I'm gonna talk about that first I'm gonna talk about that first because while the reds are clashing doing their thing they sit up here and they attack the monster and what is probably one of the most gangsterish shows of force I have seen in a Sentai in a very long time. Destra shows up out the blue. Sits up her, talks to the monster today, like, do a failure. Like, dude, I'm finna handle this work. And then Destra sits up her and he puts on a clinic of ass whoopings. He puts in the work on everybody around. If you are here in the building and you are transformed into a costume superhero, you's finna get your ass whooped. And that's what happens. We needed a Destro establishing shot. This was that. You might be sitting up here thinking because of that box we put away earlier about Goche. They know Goche's thing is making monsters grow. So that's what that is. That's what you do with your things on your tits, which I think is kind of hot. But that's another conversation entirely and says a whole lot about me. But anyway, I appreciate that the show took its time to make sure that you understand that Destra isn't all talk. We knew, we understood this from the exchanges during this episode with Goche about what it is that I'm doing, the moves that I'm trying to make. But he sits up here and puts in work. And then to establish the work you put in, I done whooped y'all ass so bad I'm bored. Hey, yo, here's a, yo, here's a giant monster to fight. Y'all figure it out. I'm done whooping y'all ass for the day. See y'all in a couple of episodes and I'm going to whoop y'all ass again. Hold these L's, deuces, and leaves. If the show's goal in that was to put over Destra, you have succeeded, show. 
I was already a Dexter fan. I already figured out this fool was a gangster. I was just sitting up here patiently waiting to see how gangster this fool is. This whole episode proved Dexter a gangster. He, he gonna put in that work. But again, like I said earlier, I don't know if his gangster is going to is going to like extend into when you have to be made an example of. Because see, while Destra is a monster, Destra is the only one you really have available to win at some point where either the Granio got to sit up her and show like, yo, this is only my first form. I kill a fool thinking about it. Or you have someone else who's going to take Destra's place or, 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 um, or, um, or, I, or, or Jersey Iceman Durvin over here who sat up her froze everybody with why the Lupin Rangers are fighting or whatever. Or whoever that dude is or whoever it is. Somebody is going to either make a fool of Destra or Destra going to make a fool of somebody in a show of force. <coughs> oh, excuse me. But you've really got to wonder which way the show is going to come at that. Because the show can come at that in a myriad of ways. And I just named a whole bunch of them. And there's a whole bunch more. Because for all we know, Dexter could be somebody. Not the first time in a Sentai where the bad guy was somebody else all along and knew more than they ever let on. But I don't know if that's the card that, that they're going to play with Dexter. But I'm interested to see because this character is so wild and off the chain. And I'm like, this dude got what it takes for me to start calling him a lord of the show. But we will see. Um, let's see. The day is saved because ultimately after all this stuff, things. So, Dexter whoops everybody's ass. Gets completely the fuck over on the one on triple the G.O.D. In another box that we're going to forget about. Let's rewind. Let's get to the thing that I want to get to. The clash of our reds. That, yeah. Dial fighters being stolen. Bikes. Blah, blah, blah. All of that is wonderful. It's great. It's super. It's nice and establishing. When Keiichiro and, and Kai and Kyra get in each other's faces... And Kijiro makes this giant statement of simply this. I don't know what's going on, nor do I care. You chose to steal for whatever reason. And because of that, I'm the police. I'm going to do what it's going to do. And using these powers to maintain the law and order of what it is we do is the only thing that's important. And that Kyrie sits up her and like, look, you don't know what it is, fam, and it don't matter. We gonna steal, we gonna rob, we gonna kill, we gonna maim, you name it, we gonna do it to get what it is that we want. It is in this establishment of what it is, of where the show ultimately is going to go. Is that at some point, this truth has to come up. For the sake of what the show is, you will not get this until the very end. When coming together between these two teams is legitimately going to matter. Or if they learn the info, because see, you can't sit up here and the Pedal Rangers learn this information too early. And then it's like, let's go soft on them because we lost people. That the Lupin Rangers don't really have nothing to understand from the other side because they're cops. They got their own thing. They doing their own thing. But, yo, you ain't took an L like we didn't took an L. So there's nothing for you to really understand. That that understanding is going to have to come from the other side. That when the truth start coming out about VS changes and bikes and planes and crosses and whatever the case may be is when all of that is going to happen. If you thought this was the last time these two that these two were going to clash and have a clash of ideals that means something, you're dead wrong. 
you are going to see this a lot more frequently because of the kind of characters they are. That Kyrie, he laid back. But that guilt of what happened to his brother eats at him. Kenichiro just wants to be the best cop he can. He just wants to bring in the perp to keep the streets safe. And no one can blame you for that. It is these clashing of ideals is really what's going to drive the versus part of this. Because as you add more elements to this stew of adding new ranges, of adding reasons why, and everything that's going to go into this stew that is ultimately going to explode into a wild finale that as fans that will hopefully appreciate. We're only five episodes in. This show can go anywhere. But my hope is that as much as I am enjoying reviewing this show right now, is how I feel in the end game. That's all I want. I want how I feel hype right now. I want to grab and continue to get that same hype every single time, every single flip. Because this episode was off the chain because of of that clash and all I wanted to do was get to how I felt about that and how establishing that is important for the show's narrative going forward because of those characters. It's like, again, the more combustible elements we add to this stew, whether it's new ranges, whether it's questions, whether it's the intrigue or whatever's going on, the nucleus of what this show is going to be is going to be Kyrie versus Kichiro. That is going to be what this show lives and dies on. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Because even though this is going to be your major clashing point of your nucleus, is that we put a whole bunch of things in boxes. We got Destra doing his own thing. We got Goche. She she got a mind of her own. At least I hope so. You got the rest of the Lupin Rangers sitting up here dealing with how they dealing with it. And the Pattern Rangers doing their thing. And you got all these elements of Kogure has no answers. The police sitting up here not telling you everything. But that's the police for your ass. And such and such and so. You have these things. You have to legitimately wonder what the show is going to do with these things. And until we get some clear answers, all I can do is sit down and watch this show every week and give the opportunity to do what it is that it's going to do. And that's all I can really ask from it. And in that, I thank the show for doing that and being that for me because, again, again, just, just, just to let you know what it is, just to let you know. I had my reservations when they was like, yo, this is going to be a versus Sentai. And I'm like, okay. I'm going to walk in this and nothing. And all this show continues to do is delight and amaze me. That's what this show continues to do all the time. That's all it does. And this episode is what I've been waiting for. And it did not disappoint Here's hoping we get more of episodes that don't disappoint. But yo, that right there, Lupin Rainer vs. Patrick Ranger, episode number five. Episode number five, Global Police in the Crosshairs. Yo, told you this one was a doozy off the chain. More or more that feeling good to be back on this work, back in motion. I appreciate all the love and everything, and we're going we gonna to be playing catch-up. I got a plan about how it is that I'm going to play catch-up, so you guys just chill out, stay tuned. Work going to come as work going to come, and we're going to do what it do. So, man, look, you know what? Let's just go ahead and just get up out of here. You know what I'm saying? Let's go and turn to a video. You know who I am. I'm the one in the alley, the triple, the G-O-D, live on Team GRF TV. And <coughs> I like to thank all of you. For joining me for another install in the Triple the Guy Speak song. And with that being said, I'll holler at you guys next time, man. Peace out. Ha 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 ha.